today we're jumping in the Wayback Machine and we're taking a look at the Atari 800XL computer. That was my first introduction to computers and video games. The Atari 800XL was the third model of Atari 8-bit computers. It had a whopping 64 kilobytes of memory. Notice that what you see here is the computer. It didn't come with any monitor or disk drive. You could use the Atari 2600 controllers with the computer as it had the ports right on the side of the unit. And my brothers and I found that the Sega Genesis controllers would also work on the computer as the connections were the same. My family had our Atari 800XL plugged into a Commodore monitor. As a side note, that same monitor was the monitor I first saw the Sega Dreamcast run on. When I was replaying these games for this video, it just shows, wow, how much time has passed. And what I thought was super immersive gameplay is now a little dreary and dull, but the three games I'm gonna look at today are still super fun and cool. Let's check them out. First up is Star Raiders 2. This is probably the best game for the system and probably the highlight of today. You're a starfighter and you have to take down the evil Xylon Squadron. Star Raiders 2 was originally designed to be a movie tie-in game for the film The Last Starfighter. It ended up being scrapped and became a sequel to Star Raiders. You travel to different planets and star systems to track down and eliminate threats. There are motherships that you have to plan your attack just right to beat them. You can travel at warp speed, refuel and repair your ship at space stations, and if you want you can even go to the sun. You'll just melt. Man, I always loved how your cockpit melts right there. Next is a game I used to play constantly, and that's New York City The Big Apple. I don't have any proof or journalistic sources for what I'm about to say, but I have always felt that this game had a direct influence on the Grand Theft Auto series, and I've always wondered if Sam and Dan Hauser if it played this way back in the day and said, you know, this game would be real cool if you could steal cars and shoot people. The goal of this game is to survive in New York City for seven days, but that's no easy task. The traffic is hectic and, whoa, did, did that guy just crash into the wall? Let's see that again, rewind that. <laughs> New York drivers. The game will tell you to do various errands and tasks and they turn into really bizarre mini games. Simply taking money out of the bank involves dodging zombies and robbers shooting guns. That about sums up every New York bank I've ever been to. Then the automat. Here you're supposed to eat like a gazillion hamburgers before this asshole eats them. Look at this jerk. He's a bastard. The post office is a frogger type game, albeit a frustrating one. You make one wrong move and you're sent back to the beginning. I think this is supposed to be the World Trade Center, and this is my favorite mini game where you have to get to the top to get a pretzel. I love pretzels, especially pretzel thins. Have you seen these things? It's a pretzel, but it's thin. Mm. Revisiting this game was really interesting for me. As I said, I used to play this all the time, and wow. <laughs> the third and final game I'll mention today is Master of the Lamps. This game is friggin' awesome. You fly in a magic carpet and space through diamonds. The music is pretty awesome for this game too. Just take a listen. After you complete your magic carpet space journey, you bang on one of these gongs three times to summon this genie who will blow music notes from his pipe, and then as the notes fly down, you have to repeat the same notes using the colored gongs. You repeat this process until you get to the end, and that's about it. Well, that's it for a quick look at three games I used to play on our Atari 800XL. And finding one of these units and getting them to work these days is a little cumbersome. In fact, our family's unit uh, the graphics chip blew multiple times and it doesn't work anymore to this day. Um, so there's a website you can go to where you can still experience these games and I'm going to put it in the description but the website is www.xlatari.com and you'll probably have to finagle your browser with Java exceptions and whatnot to get it to work but uh, go ahead check them out have some fun see a little bit of gaming history and I want to thank you today for joining me for these Atari memories and I'll see you next time.